Hi there, I'm Pete Scargill. I'm going to assume you know a little bit about JavaScript in this short video. I had a problem a little while ago and what I was doing with JavaScript wasn't working for me and it turns out that objects were the solution to the problem. I want to show you what the problem was and why I think objects are a good solution. So first of all, what was I trying to achieve? If you look at that gauge in the middle, that gauge is my latest little toy that I've made. It's built in HTML5 Canvas with JavaScript. It's designed to be a block that fits into Node-RED, specifically Node-RED dashboard, for IoT home control applications. I have some Node-RED here. There's my uh, object, rather boring looking panel there, called my test gauge, uh, with some inputs that I can put into it to test it. So I'm going to press those inputs, and if you watch the gauge here, you will see um, the gauge move around. Probably not as smoothly as in the original uh, due to the video, but it uh, should be reasonably smoothly. The lights here, depending on uh, the relationship between the needles and these set points, may or may not flash. Uh, if they flash irregularly, it's because I'm editing the video, so don't get hung up on that. So I can change the set point positions. There you go. See that red thing? Uh, and set point two. I can change those back and forward. And uh, obviously the gauges. Uh, also this little LCD display down here. Um, I can put things like um, goodbye. Mm. 21 volts, etc. Right, so a number of different things I can do with this gauge. So I built a gauge in JavaScript and quite a considerable amount of it. And when I was finished, I thought, well, that's it, I'll publish that. And then I thought, well, it would be nice to have two gauges side by side. And that's when it all fell apart. Because there was so much interaction between variables in the two gauges that I couldn't make them work individually and I thought well okay I can rename variables that's not a problem but to pass that on to other people that'd just be a non-starter. So that's when I started investigating objects and I'm quite pleased that I spent the time to learn how to use them. All right so this has got nothing to do with gauges this is just a very simple example with no complicated maths in it or anything. Let me show you here, we have CodePen, which is a, an online tool for messing around in JavaScript harmlessly. You can't do yourself any damage whatsoever. So I have three panes here, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The HTML section has um, a div in which I'm going to put the results of what we're gonna do here. Uh, this bit at the top is just uh, loading in jQuery. If you're using JavaScript, really, you're probably going to want to use jQuery. It's a wonderful um, browser independent uh, library for I.O. And, and lots of other things now. There's fantastic stuff, jQuery. And that's just an online, what you call a CDN. I could, I could house it lo locally. All right, to make things easy, I've just set a large font size here in the CSS. And the rest is JavaScript. So we're looking at, uh, if you like, uh, an object that, that can just put up numbers on the screen and do things with them. Nothing complicated at all. So on the surface of it, it looks like I've made a function called myobj, and that's all I've done. What I've actually done is made an object called myobj. It's, it's a lot different to the way you might do this in C with you know, or C sharp or whatever, with function constructors and destructors and all that stuff. Very familiar function my object. That's not actually doing anything. Right, so in function my object, I need a variable which I'm going to call v1, which I'm going to set initially to the value of 5. I've called it this because that's just something you do in objects. This means that v1 is owned by this object and it will be publicly available. And that's important. Later on, I will show you a different version with it not publicly available. I've got an internal function called init. And what happens is when my object is used, init 
passes is going to pass something, it's going to actually pass this. Passes something to a little background function that is going to run every 25 milliseconds. And it's called appropriately every 25 milliseconds. So every 25 milliseconds, I'm going to run a function called every 25 milliseconds. And just because of the way this works, I want to pass a parameter to every 25 milliseconds. I have to stick it on the end. I can't just put it in brackets after every 25 milliseconds. Pass it at the end. So I'm passing this all the way through. I've got another function here which simply takes in a number, doubles it, and puts it into v1. The function every 25 milliseconds, which runs within this, no good having it externally, I need it internal to this object, is very simple. You pass this to it, and using jQuery, you print out to div fred pass this v1, which as we know is this v1. There's a good reason for all this complexity. And, and that's it. We're done. And at the very end, to save then having to initialize the object, we initialize it, it initializes itself. It calls init, passing this to it. And that's how, from there, from that this, filters all the way through to pass this v1. Let me show you this in action. Brian equals new my obj. And lo and behold, five appears. Because in the initialization, I set v1 to five, and every 25 milliseconds, I'm updating that v1 value. So it's sitting there at the bottom. We have a function in here. Now that's a public function, because it's called this doublet, um, called doublet. And here we go. Brian doubling, uh, takes 12 and doubles it and puts it into V1, and you can see we have 24. Because I de decided to declare V1 as a, uh, a publicly accessible variable, I can access V1 directly. There you go. Now, so what's all this stuff about, all this, this? Well, if I create another one of these objects, going back to what I said about the gauge, I want all these variables. I, I, I don't want to interact with each other. So why can't I just create another Brian here now? Well, it's going to write to the same div. That's not a very good idea. So let's modify the function slightly. Let's make a second div, which we'll call Fred2. And let's pass the value of the div through instead of setting it here. So we'll call it, well, the div. And we'll pass the div. And my obj, when I'm creating Brian, I'm going to create Brian to use Fred. And lo and behold, we're back to square one there. So let's create our second myobj. We're going to call that one Ian. But Ian's going to talk to Fred too. And now you have two divs. Okay, so now you're going to see the point of this stuff. If I say Brian double it. Well, I only affected the first V1, not the second one, which remains at 5. And obviously I can do that. Completely, utterly and separate from each other. Right. Similarly, if I say Brian V1 equals 7, again, we're only affecting the Brian instance of this object. So we've got complete isolation. 
let me show you another variation of this, just a minor variation, where I don't want any external variables. I just want to access stuff via functions because that's nice and safe. And I'm able to do things I couldn't do with a variable, like, for example, if we go back to my gauge, I want a value, say, from minus 10 there to 100. But actually, this is an arc. So what I'll end up is the needle will be um, a value not a 360. So it will need translating. And I don't want to do that every 25 milliseconds. So I can do that in a function like this. When I take the variable in, translate it into a degree. All right. So we've decided this time we're not going to have public variables. So all we do is we take v1 and call it var. Don't miss any, don't miss var off. You'll end up with a public variable you can see all over the place. Just may call it var. So now we don't need, we can get rid of those parameter passing things. We can just refer it to it as v1. That's a private internal variable, which we cannot influence from the outside we can influence it only by a function and again i'll demonstrate to you brian double it 12 affects only the first v1 and not the second one and ian double it affects the second one and not the first one brian v1 doesn't work at all because that value is no longer accessible to the outside world what I would hope you would do here is take the code, which is at codepen.io slash scargill slash pen slash lowercase VGA and then uppercase barbecue, BBQ, B capital B capital Q. Go and have a play with that. Do what I've done, comment things out and experiment. What happens if you miss var off altogether? What happens if you use this? Okay. By the time you've played with this for a while, it will suddenly just become obvious why you're doing it. And you'll be able to apply that to any widgets that you might want to make, um, either in Node-RED or in JavaScript generally. So a lot easier than they look once you've learned a couple of tricks objects in JavaScript.